Hello beautifuls, this is Aromi here, and welcome back to Prank Masters. I, I, I was like about to forget. Uh, last episode, we have been introduced to Julia, and she has moved into her new house. So let's actually look around, because her mother had called for her. And my voice is a bit better today, um, so I will try to give her a voice, hopefully. I enter the kitchen and look for mom. Oh wow, her mom's pretty. There you are. She comes in into view when she steps from behind the dining room table. A, sm a smile, not small. A smile lights up her features. So, is this... <laughs> I'm trying to make her have like a mature voice, but my voice is kind of pitchy. So... So, is there something you wanted me for? Yes, there is. I keep my eyes fixed on her as she moves to the kitchen bench and lifts the plastic bag into her hands. I'm still trying her voices, so that wasn't her voice, okay? Her smile only grows brighter as she passes the bag to me. It might be a tad big on you, but if you try it on now, I can adjust it tonight. What is it? <sighs> okay. Another new school? Huh. She gives me a quick nod as an ans as answer and goes back to unboxing, unpacking boxes. Oh my gosh, my brain's not computing. Do I really have to go to school tomorrow? I mean, you guys just told me we'd be moving this morning. <coughs> oh, excuse me. You didn't let me have a second to absorb any of it. Don't you think this is a little unfair? She halts what she's doing for a moment and looks at me. What do you mean, sweetie? Then she turns her back to me again. She's been unpacking our belongings into the cupboards all morning, and it looks like she still hasn't organized the cut cutlery drawer. She moves back and forth from the boxes to the drawers. As much as I like to continue the conversation, her rapid movements around the kitchen makes me feel like my words would just be useless. There's probably no point in trying to reason with her now. I peek into the bag and inspect the newest addition to my collection of school uniforms. So, can I at least know the name of the school I'll be regrettably attending tomorrow? I'm asking in order to refine interest. After placing an electric kettle on the kitchen bench next to the fridge, she dusts her hands and absentmindedly glances in my direction. Cliff and Hine. It's a little far from here, but it's the closest to the house we could find. Yay, more exercise with me. Mary, do you have any clue where I left that hammer? I want to put this picture up. Mom cranes her neck towards Dad's voice. It should be on that box near the stairs. Where? <laughs> Seconds later, a thunderous crash echoes throughout the entire house. Great. Dad fell off another ladder. I hate ladders, yo. I'm like so freaked out to go on one because they don't look safe at all. Mom gasps in horror and charges out of the kitchen. World meet my parents. I follow mom into the living room. Dad's brought out across the floor. A heap of unpacked boxes are piled around him like the rubble of a demolished building. He attempts a wry smile while he struggles to right himself back onto his feet. Don't tell me you've gone hurt. Gone and hurt yourself again. Seems like he's the clumsy one of him. I would think my mom would though. To say he regains his footing, agony flashes across his face, his eyes shooting to his left ankle. Out of worry for her better half, mom forges through the piles of cardboard boxes. She crouches and examines his ankle. I think you've sprained it, Daniel. Dad's expression twists with every one of mom's prods to the quickening oh, to the quickly reddening area. Ah, <sighs> great job, Dad. That's... that's smart. What? <laughs> Dad can really be brash and careless sometimes. I'm no different in a lot of ways. So sometimes I wonder if I inherited it from him. Yep, you've definitely done a number on this ankle. I'll go and get some ice. I skid to a halt a few meters away from the fridge, just to get remember that our house is an electricity-free zone at the moment. Great. Mom, the fridge has no power. We don't have any ice. I can hear Ma uh, Mom's agitated sigh all the way from the living room. I return to the living room and shrug my shoulders. Juliet, can you go to the store and pick up an ice pack for your father? I'll try running his wound under the tap for the time being. It would be unwise to let this go unchecked for too long. 
Okay, I'll get my wallet from... No need. She pauses and fishes dad's wallet from his back pocket. Just take your father's. Hey, wait a minute. Mom hushes him with a playful swipe to his shoulder. Don't mind, dear. I'm just giving her $20. I try not to giggle, but when I see the worry written all over dad's face, I can't help it. Mom passes a note to me and shoots a smile my way. I'll be back as quickly as I can. Thank you, sweetie. Be careful on your way. I strap my helmet on, trying to recall the roads would travel on our way to the house. Try as I might, my memory is, isn't the, smart the, the smartest, the sharpest when it comes to directions. If I'm not wrong, we passed the shopping district a little ways before we got here. So basically, the supermarket should be somewhere northeast from here. It's like whenever I play in Minecraft and I have to follow the coordinates, I get lost. I, I can't follow it. As I hop onto my bike, I notice that the, the house next door has a, a removalist truck parked outside with furniture being loaded out of it. Guess we're not the only people new to the neighborhood. I put my feet to the pedals and ho head off to the supermarket. I wonder who that would be. Fifteen minutes fly by while I'm still mindering about on my bike. Although I continue scanning the area in search of the supermarket, it feels much more like I'm wandering aimlessly. Scratch that. I'm utterly lost. Don't you have a phone that has a GPS system? Then again, I can't follow that either. Like, I used it in New York. We were trying to find this Korean barbecue place and it took me somewhere completely different. So we just ate at this Japanese barbecue place. Oh well, it's still barbecue. Well, at least I was able to find the shopping district. That's something. I watch the crowd as people walk here and there, going about their own business. I can't bring myself to ask them for directions. Everyone seems like they have somewhere to be. Besides, Dad always told me not to talk to strangers. So, yeah. <laughs> I turn left and start down a road lined with restaurants. The warm aromas floating from their interiors remind me that I haven't eaten once today. I'm suddenly stricken by hunger on on the spot. Oh god, that does not sound like a stomach growling. It sounds like a dog growling. I sure could go for something to eat right now. Right, right about now. <coughs> After a few minutes, the hunger becomes too much for me to bear, so I decide to find something simple to eat. I pivot left on the coming corner and spot a bakery. I glance down at my watch, keeping my right hand steady on the, handle, the bike handle. Not lunch hour yet. My luck being as incredibly foul as it is, the sunlight pings off of the watch's face and assaults my eyes. Before I can even pull my eyes away, some poor soul ex exiting a nearby restaurant walks right into me. Proving the blood of my lineage, I'm left sprawled out in a heap like my father was earlier. Ugh! I shoot my hand to my head to check that my helmet is still secured. Whew, you saved me, helmet. If it wasn't for you, I might have earned myself a nasty concussion. Ow. Oh, it's, it's a Caden, I think. <laughs> the pain voice reminds me that the accident had, been, had more than one casualty. I glance his direction, preparing an apology, but then my mouth seals tighter than if it were sewn shut. Seated on the hard concrete before me is a guy around my own age, with rose red hair and eyes as green as spring grass. It bows neatly fastened around the collar in his white dress shirt, and he's wearing a pitch black vest that le leads to black slacks. He sure is dressed nicely. Hang on. I keep staring. The harder I look at him, the less I can deny that I'd knocked over someone I know. She knows him? J Juliet? I wish I could say without an, an iota of guilt that he's got the wrong person, but that would be impossible. There's no way I could pull the wool over his eyes now. I pick myself up and dust off my clothes. I force a smile, reach my hand out to him, and try to radiate genuine joy. Need a hand, Caden? He chuckles lightly and takes my hand. I pull him to his feet. For a second, I nearly topple onto him as I hadn't gauged his weight correctly. I contribute my clumsiness to not having seen him in three years. Who is he? So, it really is you. No wonder you look like Juliet. His inane statement makes me roll my eyes without even realizing. Yeah, the one and only. How have you been, Jules? Please don't call me that. It's either Julie or Julie. 
Well, there's not a whole lot for me to choose from, is there? That's the point. But choose is my personal nickname for you. And I don't like it. So, can I call you Juliet? I shoot him a glare. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I didn't say anything. Other than how long your hair has grown, you're still the same as I remember. Um, yeah. Well, you definitely grew a few inches since I last saw you. Why, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> a compliment from Julie? Now that's rare. It feels a bit strange that I'm still able to speak with him le like all those years before, no matter what had transpired between us. What happened? We were as good at friends as could be, at least for a while, until he had up and disappeared from my previous school without a single warning. Oh, he just got up and left? Nah, no, that ain't cool. <laughs> but now that I think about it, there was also that other time when he couldn't... So, how are you, Julie? His <laughs> sudden questions derailed my train of thought, and I find myself glaring again. I guess I'm fine. What's with the emphasis? No reason. That's good to hear. <coughs> Sorry if I'm coughing on you guys. Sorry. It really seems like he's forgotten all about that time. I look down at my bike to see one of its wheels still spinning around and around as if it's dazed from the crash. Right. My bike. Oh, let me give, it, give you a hand with that. No, I'm perfectly capable of handling it myself. Handling it. Okay. Still, let me help you. No, really, I've got it. Just let me help you. Seriously, why do you always want to help me? Because we're friends, duh. Uh, no, friends don't walk out on each other like that and not tell me a single damn thing. <laughs> we both lay hands on the bike and lift it from the street so it can, it can stand with the pride of a real bicycle once more. Once it's upright, Kenan looks to me with a warm smile. So, what brings you to Cliffin? I just moved here today. Oh, really? Yep. That's wonderful. I wrap my hands around my bike handles and squeeze harder. Hard, I squeeze hard. It takes a lot to not just mount, mount, <coughs> my voice, damn. It's just take, uh, it takes a lot to not just mount it and cycle off. As much as I want to leave, I keep getting roped into conversation. Why is it that wonderful? Because we can see each other again. Just like it'll, it'll be just like old times. Jeez, the way you put it makes it sound like we're about to over the hill. I don't get it. Okay, though. <laughs> oh God, that stomach that roars like a dog. Just I'm about to make an excuse to leave. My stomach interrupts me with a loud grumble. I take a deep intake of air and sigh internally. Looks like someone's hungry. Say, do you like cupcakes? I think I have some left at the restaurant. Cupcakes? Gimme, gimme, gimme. Gimme cupcakes. Cannon gestures grac graciously to the building behind him, like a host. This is where you work? Well, I should have guessed from the get up. Yeah. He chuckles quietly to himself. It's part-time work, so if you ever have it to be around, just give me a ring and I'll make sure you'll get the best service. Sure, but I feel like that'll be a big if. Perhaps? Uh, how can I even ring you up when I don't have your number? <laughs> An awkward mist clouds around us as our conversation is brought to an abrupt halt. Thankfully, it doesn't last too long as Kaylin looks, looks to me and whispers. Would you mind sticking around for a little longer? What for? I'm going to run and get one of those cupcakes for that hungry tummy of yours. Don't worry about it. I think I can survive with an empty stomach for a few more hours. Are you sure? The cupcakes here are really nice. Plus, they'll fr they're free to staff members. Crap, how do you not get fat then? If it's for free. But, I'm not a staff member. Cannon places his hand beside his mouth and whispers again. That's why I'm getting it, and not you. So, what are you saying? You want one? Yes, I do. Who doesn't like free food? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay, then. Alright, give me a second. I only had to wait for a few seconds, and the next thing I know, Cannon comes out with the restaurant with a cupcake in hand. 
Here you are. You weren't lying. Oh, it's so cute. That's so cute and so chocolatey. Oh my god, is that a Kit Kat bar right in the cupcake? Oh, so in. I just went in and grabbed a random cupcake. My coworkers didn't see a thing. He winks. I just hope you don't mind chocolate with caramel buttercream frosting. Hell no, I do not mind. My tummy is not disagreeing either. I nearly bore holes in the cupcake with eyes as I stare it down with a watering mouth. But I pretend that I'm not excited for it, keeping a cool and calm expression. It's okay, I guess. I don't mind. Thanks. Anytime. I take a deep breath so that I don't cram it into my gullet. The moment I sink my teeth into its fluffy, creamy goodness, it melts in my mouth. It's so nice. Of course, cupcakes are nice in general. So awesome, but so fattening in the calories. <laughs> Even though this cupcake won't be enough to fill me, it definitely satisfies my taste buds. So, what do you think? I quickly finish off the remainder and look up to Caden. That was the best cupcake I've ever tasted. But in order to save my sense of pride, I give him a nod and smile coolly. Yeah, everything's five stars when you're hungry. Ah, such it. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. I peer down at my wrist and check the time once more. This time I don't get a face full of, of the sun. Surprisingly, I've already been take, talking to him for six minutes. That felt like forever. This, that feels more than six minutes in my time. I should be going now. I orient my bike in the opposite direction. Oh, already? Yeah, I'm supposed to be buying an ice pack for my dad. Come to think of it, I really need to get it to him as quickly as I can. Ah, uh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer then. I strike the kickstand and seat myself. Well, it was a lovely surprise meeting you again. Sing here. Bye. Be safe. Oh, by the way, which school are you going to? Gone. <laughs> I wave goodbye to him as I round the corner. So now we know Kaden was her old friend in the past. Now we just need to find Romeo and... I forgot his other name. Damn. Having gotten myself even more lost than I already was, I stop my pedaling and stand together my bearings. I'm without a single clue where I'm headed, and the only thing I know for sure is that I ended up in the middle of a park. Good work, Julie. Now all you have to do is find that supermarket. Wherever it is. I seriously should have asked Caden for directions when I had a chance. Ugh! This is so frustrating. This is one of the many reasons why moving sucks. Once you come to a new city, you've got to learn a new environment and the lay of a town all over again. I've been here for like a year where Tyler is at since I moved and I still don't freaking know places at all. And it, I've been here for a year. So it's going to take me like probably 10 years to know even that. <laughs> Honestly, I should have the skills for this by now. You know, that's why there's Google Maps. You got to use it, you know, just go to the app store and download it. But since my sense of direction is as trustworthy as a ship with a cracked hole, I really don't have much to go on. Wait a minute. I've got it. I'll just use the GPS on my phone. Oh my god. Brain explosions everywhere. Why didn't I think of this earlier? Brandishing my phone, I tap through its menu to pull open the GPS app. So I'm currently in Monument Park. I head straight through here and take a left at the roundabout. I scroll through the map until I catch the supermarket. Oh, it's way over there. No wonder I wasn't able to find it. I was nowhere near it to begin with. Finally, having gained a sense of where I was going, I slowly began my venture through the park while following my phone. I glance up to see a sign pointing out the supermarket's path. I'm on the right track, then. Shutting off the screen, I motion to place it back into my pocket. But I halt midway when a guy comes charging out of nowhere with me in the dead of the, the dead center of his path. Unlike a regular person, though, he runs while looking over his shoulder, blind to all that's in front of him. It looks as though he's being chased by someone. Hey, watch where you're... Trying to avoid another mark on my mental drive record, driving record, I accidentally steer my bike right into a tree. I'm caber tossed from my bike and into the air, becoming an honorary bird for a passing moment. And my first twist of luck for the day, I land on the soft beds of grass below, avoiding serious injury. When the stars floating above me scatter and vanish from my 
from before my eyes. I raised from the ground. I rode the back of my head, m not head, my neck, to make sure that I haven't broken anything I needed. <laughs> and there goes my timer, which is awfully loud. Don't know why it's so loud. <laughs> Let me lower the ring ringtone volume. But that is going to be it for today's episode. We have met one guy. So I guess the first episode was kind of like a pilot. And then the second episode, which is this, we met Caden. And now next episode, we're going to meet probably the redhead guy. What was he? No, brown haired guy. With like Tyler outfit wise. So I will see you guys next episode. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys next time.